Well, it was important for me to be along a beach again this morning because once again we're going to join Jesus and his disciples along the beach in John chapter 21. One feature you normally always find on the beach uh, are footprints. They're not there today because it happens to be illegal to be on the beach, but normally they're everywhere. And when we look at the passage this morning, we, we find the footprints of Jesus all over the place. And I'm going to call them the mercy prints of Jesus because every time we see one of his, his footprints alongside the footprint of, of one of the disciples, those footprints together say to you and me, mercy. Here is the mercy of the Lord to be in this place with these disciples. So as we stand among these footprints, so to speak, in this passage, I wonder why it is that you and I often don't understand mercy the way we should. And I wonder why it is that you and I often don't extend mercy the way that we should. This passage reminded me of when I was just out of seminary. Kathy and I were ministering in a small church in a different state. And there was in that church a woman who really loved the Lord, but she was a woman who had financial needs. She also needed a new roof on her house, and she never asked the church to help her uh, with that need. But, but Kathy and I, and I knew uh, of that need. And so with the, the starry eyes and the shine of a, a brand new pastor fresh out of the ministry box, I thought here's our opportunity as a church to really put our faith into practice and to help someone who is in real need. And so I imagined in my mind all these scenarios that would happen as I presented this need to the leaders of the church. But I never anticipated. I never had a scenario for the response that I actually got. The leaders of the church said, no, 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 absolutely not. We will not help this woman put a roof on her house. Why? Well, I came to find out it's because the leaders knew the history of this woman and her husband, who wasn't a believer. He didn't come to church, but he was a great guy and, and so friendly. And the leaders knew some of the, the sin patterns uh, and, and the choices that this couple had made through the years, really through the decades. And so it was their strongly held and strongly expressed opinion that if this couple had made different choices in their life along the way, then they would not need a roof on their house right now. I feel equally certain that these same leaders would have put a roof on the house of someone they did not know, whose history they did not know, but there would be no help for this couple. The good news is that a, a roof did go on the house. It went on by the help and with the resources of other believers who did not know the, the history of this couple. The even better news is that the husband actually came to faith in Christ before we left. So uh, it's a good story in that way. But what it reminds me of is how thankful, how thankful I am, and you should be, that the Lord is not like we so often are. Because our prior history, which the Lord is fully aware of every minute of our prior history, that doesn't come into play when he decides whether or not he will help us, whether or not he will give mercy to us. In fact, it's because he knows us so well and all of our history that he is so eager to help us and to give his mercy to us. So this morning, re really my only desire is that we see Jesus for the merciful, merciful Savior that he is. Because as we see Jesus in his mercy, it, it's going to change us we're going to begin to, to think differently because of the mercy of Jesus. We're going to begin to, to feel differently because of the mercy of Jesus. And our actions are going to begin to change because of the mercy of Jesus. And that's good news because you, as, you and I as believers in Christ must be people not only who receive mercy, but people who extend mercy as well. So I'm going to stop the video here and I'd like you to take just a few minutes to talk about mercy and, and define it. How would you define mercy before you and I define it together? 
and think about what you might have done if you had been one of those church leaders. I know I didn't give you all of the details of the story, but what decision might you have made? Maybe you know someone else or a similar situation. Uh, what decision do you think you would have made and why? And when you finish talking about those things, defining mercy, I'm going to ask you once again this week to read the passage uh, for yourself. If you're alone or with your family, uh, go ahead and you read the passage. It's John chapter 1, verses 9 through 19. Uh, and when you have finished reading those verses, come back together and, and we'll start the next video and start going through uh, th this passage together. Let me just pray really quickly, Lord. I pray now that you will bless all of these individuals, all these families, these couples, however people may be worshiping uh, right now. As they come around your word, bless them with your presence, uh, the, the enlightenment uh, of your spirit. Uh, as they read your holy word, bless them. Bless us, change us because of it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.